The Golden Age of Gaming. Modern Warfare launched the Call of Duty franchise towards full-blown stardom. World of Warcraft rose to its peak. And Wii Sports was played more than most real sports. There were all-time great games in seemingly every genre. Doritos had even just released a Mountain Dew-flavored chip. Ah yes, the peak of gaming indeed. This era also birthed a gameplay feature that has given us some of the greatest memories in gaming history. A feature that has provided more player-driven content than any other. A feature that has grown in popularity over the years, but continues to have a love-hate relationship with players. You yeah. little bitch. Eat I the will. shit out of my ass, you little c How many f***ing beers have you even gotten not camping before, huh? Zero? You f***ing <laughs> The feature I'm referring to is Proximity Voice Chat. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Coach, and while having the ability to hear other players' voice around you in a game may not seem like much, its history is one worthy of recognition. Not just for the insane amount of content it's provided us, but because of what it has done and continues to do for gaming as a whole. From the good... Ah! Don't do this! No, fuck you, I will do this! Do this. Fuck you, I will do this! No. Fuck you, die, motherfucker! No, don't do this! <laughs> do the bad. Oh, yeah? You're gonna yeah. shoot me? You're gonna, gonna fucking regret that. To the straight psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> this video covers that tumultuous history, and let me tell you, it's a wild ride. Gaming in the early 2000s was a different place. Mary-Kate and Ashley had a hit Game Boy Color game. You had to pay to host a voice server like Ventrilo or TeamSpeak instead of just use a free one. And Xbox Live had just released with a promo that literally had to tell people what online voice chat was. Dude, they can hear me and I can hear them. In 2001, the legacy of Halo and Master Chief had begun. And three years later, along came Halo 2. Equipped with online matchmaking that even by today's standards is considered to be one of the greatest PvP experiences of all time, new playstyles emerged in the shooter genre, like spying behind enemy lines to overhear strategies, or hiding if you wanted to relay that information to your team without being swarmed. This was because everything said by a player would be heard in a 15-foot radius around them. Oh my god, if I die! Some people even used this feature to feed false information to the opponent. The gaming world was quickly right. starting What's to notice on, the added level of strategy, depth, right and intensity okay. that proximity voice could offer in a game requiring teamwork. I got him. I got the guy with his down. There's another one. Well, that is if the Halo community wasn't using it for a much more noble, more worthwhile reason. To shit talk. Get right, kid. Babysitters around the globe lost their jobs to Xbox Live as quality parenting was thrown out the window in favor of having date night while emotionally underdeveloped children were left at home to game. Get out Get off. right the f now! Lobbies became flooded with pre-teens who'd practice yelling the new obscenities they overheard from Billy's dad down the street. Oh, get f be down, f ESRB ratings were completely ignored, and the gaming world was in utter chaos. And it was beautiful. That is, if you weren't the victim. Ah, yes, the stereotypical, squeaky, hyperactive 12-year-old of online gaming that we all know and hate today came from this era. But by around 2010, something happened. These types of interactions had all but stopped. Not because Proximity Voice Chat was removed from Halo, but because a more popular alternative was introduced on Xbox Live. Party Chat. Party Chat was a way for friends to have private voice channels. And not only could you avoid the incessant misogyny, bigotry, and homophobia, or avoid getting flamed for losing, you could avoid losing altogether because of the competitive edge that it gave you. Or rather, avoid the competitive disadvantage of being heard in-game. Hey boys, 
What's going on? Can He's I join you? <laughs> And although Proximity Voice gave gamers the chance at unprecedented levels of realism, it was squandered by an immature player base, and it truly hurt the growth of Proximity Voice Chat moving forward. That was until another game revived it a few years later. DayZ was an open-world zombie survival game released in late 2013, which was a mod from the tactical shooter Arma 2. Rust was another survival game that released just five days before DayZ, and if you know anything about the Rust community, you'll know that they made the raging kids from the Halo days look like amateurs. If the Halo community was Draco Malfoy, the Rust community was Voldemort. Hey guys, so today I bring you the problem with Rust. It's the toxicity. And while sure, there were other games around this time that dabbled with the use of proximity voice, like Lane Chat from the MOBA Heroes of New Earth, super underrated game by the way, Daisy's concept revolved around it. It had an older, more mature audience. It was a slower paced game allowing for more interesting conversations to develop. It was a gritty adventure that prided itself on immersion, one where your primary goal was to survive and avoid losing all your shit. The biggest threat to players wasn't the zombies in the game. No, the biggest threat to players was other players. And it served as the perfect springboard for proximity voice chat once more, due to clips like these. You either tell your friends to back off or you're gonna die. I stop moving. I'm not moving. People get shot in the I love it. I love it so much. Mr. Moon! No, 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 no. I can fix you. I can fix you. I gotta make sure you can't run. It only for a minute. You can't run away from me now. <laughs> Girl, like the little pig you are. <laughs> no, no, save me! Are you okay? What have I done? Mr. Moon! I can hear Mr. Moon! <laughs> oh my By its very nature, DayZ had no real endgame. Your goal was the same whether you'd been alive for one hour or 1,000. And many times, interaction with other players was just an unnecessary risk. No way. The appeal of this post-apocalyptic world was that supplies were so scarce that players were left to eat each other. Literally. <laughs> Some guys armed to the teeth would just kill for sport. Others, cold and starving, begging for food. And the fact that players had to be face to face to make this transaction added an unrivaled level of tension unseen in games before it. Happy loot, boys. Caused purely by the players and the harsh world they inhabited. And all of this was possible because the game restricted them from being able to communicate long distance. A beautiful circle of death and suffering that provided some of the best player-driven content in gaming history up until that point. Daisy proved that when a game world is made to be harsh and attempts to use realism to simulate that harshness, even in a game riddled with bugs and optimization issues, all you have to do to make a fun experience is let human nature take its course. Don't you mouth off to me or I'm gonna slap you right in your face. Hey, hey, you shut the f up, you little f but perhaps the biggest contribution that DayZ and other survival games like it gave to the gaming world was the birth of a much more popular, entirely new genre of video game. Battle Royale games took the gaming world by storm and drew from all the most popular aspects of survival games, with H1Z1 being the first notable one featuring Proximity Chat and then Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. BR games that came out later on like Fortnite did not include this feature to the dismay of many, unless you include the three seconds of voice you get after dying in Warzone. That shit is so old, GP, man. By this time, many developers viewed proximity voice chat as a toxic feature. That's all right. After all, gaming was becoming more mainstream, more widely accepted. The demographic was shifting, growing. Just move! If you guys know it, just move. It's all I want to see some movement. 
I'm not seeing enough movement. All those salty teen boys from the Halo 2 days had grown up. Now there was a generation of salty man children. The days of freaking out after hearing a female's voice in a game was starting to fade, as more women felt safe to let their voices be heard amidst the sea of testosterone. The growth of live streaming video games encouraged many impressionable children to try out the same game their favorite streamer played. And ah yes, the ESRB's game experience may change during online play was ignored by parents just like back in the days of old. That's all right. Some long-standing live streamers were starting to reach a status of fame that rivaled some celebrities, which drew even more attention to these games. Even A-list celebs like Drake got in on the fun. Drake, every time you get a kill, the entire chat is just saying, God's plan. <laughs> And for a time, it seemed as if another golden age of gaming content had begun. Content creators were not only popular for their skill at a game, but for how they interacted with other players. Hey, good luck with that. Oh, shit! And how other players interacted with them, oftentimes in the form of stream sniping. Did somebody say chocolate? Chocolate! Horsey, 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 horsey. Horsey, horsey! Slow it's pretty much the only way an average viewer could get into voice chat with someone who viewed them as a brand risk. Some stream sniping even got so intricate, arguably choreographed, that viewers of said streamer would enact self-imposed rules as a community to make the sniping more interesting. Like when a streamer named Forsen and his community all wore the same outfit and only brought vehicles and fists to a game about gunfighting. It's in there! <laughs> <laughs> And by no means were these BR games based around the use of proximity voice chat. But these moments often took center stage over gameplay. You angry? Fuck you, bitch. There was even a man who literally built his career off disrespecting his opponents through using proximity voice chat. His name was, of course, Dr. Disrespect. How many Champions Arena games have you won? Zero. You haven't won nothing, right? You haven't won nothing your whole life. Old school gaming? Old school trash talk was back, baby. But even the doc ultimately succumbed to the mute button for good as he amassed his millions out of fear of losing it all just because some kid could say a few gamer words on stream. However, despite these profound personalities dominating the spotlight, the more diverse player base showed many of the positives Proximity Voice could offer. You could make a friend. I'm yeah, you fan, Wadi, by the way. I love your shit. Oh, shit! Avenge a friend. Yo, I'm coming up. Oh, you killed my buddy, and you're gonna die now. I'm very upset. Never mind, I'm gonna die. Never mind. <laughs> Help others. Yeah, I see you. It's all right, Dar, I'll get you down, buddy. There you go. Game of the year. Thank you. Help yourself. Friendly, friendly. Teach people. Yo, you guys really need to stop talking in the game. I heard you from a mile away. God damn it! Teach people a lesson. <laughs> Whoa! Bisha, bisha, bisha. <laughs> Find love. Hey, fuck you, give me a kiss before I die. Oh my god, that smell like flower. <laughs> Find true love. I really love you though, but uh, No, I, you don't fucking I love me, bitch. I do love you, you fucking idiot. You're a fucking fake fangirl. Uh, no! I've been following you for fucking ever, dude. What the fuck? I've been following you since day one. Kill yourself. Maybe even find a future husband or wife. So this game is called Second Life, and basically it tries to simulate real life. It actually came out a year before Halo 2, but added proximity chat later on, so I thought it deserved a mention. Shit, no more gas. No. Most of you probably know it from seeing Dwight play it on an episode of The Office. Naturally, people play Second Life to socialize and make friends. But this woman genuinely found love. 
She had a job as a waitress in the game. She talked to this dude in game like every day and ultimately ended up leaving her husband of nine years to fly 4,000 miles to not only marry him in game, but in real life too. What a story to tell your kids that you got cucked by this man. Regardless, finding true love from a feature in a video game is pretty cool, I guess. But what if I told you Proximity Voice Chat put a genre of game on the map that no one had ever really heard of before, for a reason more powerful than immersion? Watch. More powerful than friendship? Or even love? This is what I like to see. Would you like, uh, would you like a drink? No, the reason VR chat was put on the map was because of a meme. And that meme was Ugandan Knuckles. Uganda Knuckles? A game based purely around the use of proximity voice chat to socialize, where a community of people could meet and talk in a variety of literal chat rooms. A safe space for our gamers to utilize all the best aspects of the feature that had seen vastly mixed and unforeseen results over the years. Finally. But you know what really thrusted VR chat into the spotlight? This. So, remember that Forsen guy I mentioned? Uganda Knuckles is the meme potential meme of the month. His stream sniping community eventually based their mob identity around the narrator from the movie Who Killed Captain Alex. And this was an Ugandan film with a budget of under $200. And narrators in Ugandan films aren't your typical narrators. They're literally called video jokers and talk over the action after the film is shot. Mamma mia! Watch it is! <laughs> Think of it as Scarface if it was directed and voiced by Tommy Wiseau and was edited by a teenager learning how to use Adobe Premiere. Ugandan get to Air Force. Oh, and it has Kung Fu. Everybody in Uganda knows Kung Fu. Forsen's mob emulated this video joker and flooded VR chat lobbies across the internet. Do you know the way? He knows the way! It took a meme for people to come together and essentially try an uncharted genre of game. But because of that meme, VR chat grew, and the entire world began to see just the power that player driven content could provide. More games continued to include the feature, and it actually raised the intensity of PvP. And the troll potential, of course. But more than that, the technology was just getting better, along with everyone's microphones. And games were just getting more clever in how they implement it. But perhaps the greatest example of player-driven content is from a game that is surprisingly loved by many for its single-player experience. And while this game did offer passable online play, it took a private server of dedicated role players and content creators to show the world the full potential of utilizing proximity voice as the foundation of gameplay. The name of the game is one we all know and love. Grand Theft Auto 5. Some say the gentleman is uh, still in the area. He's uh, he's known, large, and dangerous. Please keep an eye out for this man. He uh, goes by the name James Tinklebottom. It said oh, that there are seven children confirmed. Ah. But what made it possible was the use of a third party multiplayer mod for its single player version, made by the players for the players. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Roleplay offered all of the benefits of proximity chat with virtually none of the downsides mentioned up until this point. Servers generally only consisted of friends or trusted members instead of random undesirables from the depths of the internet, thus eliminating toxicity. Well, sort of. Hey, mother bitch, what are you doing? Ah, mother, what the fuck is wrong with you, hey, son of a bitch? Hey, hey, hey. I ought to drag my lady slug across the back of your head and leave a trail of and unlike all the proximity chat games before it, not only do these RP servers have it, everyone is forced to use it. And that is the biggest distinction between it and other games. If everyone isn't committed to the use of proximity chat, the immersion factor falls short. 
it really doesn't matter what game it is. And this especially applies to games that encourage role-playing. So what better way to forego the need most game companies have to attract wide audiences for profit and instead have private servers that players both literally and figuratively govern? Well, the downside is it may be popular to watch, but much, much harder to play as the best servers are exclusive, and you can't really force a player to utilize a feature they don't want to. Be smaller, be smaller. Well, well I can't be smaller. I'm, I'm the size that don't I be, am. Be and many people will never want or are unable to speak online. There are literally people in VR chats called mutes who don't speak ever and communicate through their own form of sign language. Not to mention, we all have our days where we just want to have our quiet time in game. Fuck off. And that, coupled with general internet toxicity and the increased use of third-party programs, it's no surprise that Proximity Voice Chat is rarely the foundation of a premier game. Rather, just an optional feature. Regardless, GTA RP is Proximity Voice Chat's maximum potential on display. And top servers like NoPixel are leaders in gaming at establishing worlds that are totally immersive and player-driven. Proximity Chat is a core component of making a believable world. And isn't that what most of us look for in a good game? I, for one, am excited at what the future may hold and hope more games incorporate it as a feature rather than a novelty or add-on that you see many popular games doing these days, like Minecraft or Among Us, which, to be fair, saw a minor revival due to the addition of a proximity voice mod. Because as games get more and more complex and realistic, it's still always the player interaction that provides the endless content. And if you guys want endless content, consider subscribing to the channel. Or better yet, supporting us on our Patreon, where you will become one of our best friends. <laughs> and if you want to watch us play games instead of just talk about them, check out our gaming channel. There's some really good stuff over there, like this. Oh, it's one of those kind of games. <laughs> <laughs> Real shame that boat didn't work. It would have helped us get across this body of water. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this ride through history and feel free to share your best memories below. Thanks for watching.